father came from the west of Ireland, from Galway, uh, East Galway, just outside Lockray. And uh, I grew up listening to music from a, you know, from a very young age. We had a string of very famous musicians coming into the house over the years when I was a small child, and I found them fascinating. And uh, growing up in North London on the Holloway Road, there was a big Galway contingent there as well. And there was an accordion in the house. And uh, because my father played the accordion as well, and his sisters played, and his brother played, so just grew up around music and listening to music and, and listening to you know old vinyls as they as they came out and just uh, just it, it, it felt like it was an obvious thing that I was going to start tinkering with the accordion one day and that's how I got into it really. Some years ago, I had a, one of the Red Palace Sopranos accord accordions which I'd grown up with and it was stolen one day and I kind of always struggled to find an accordion that sat with me really well and so um, an English guy by the name of Doug Briggs an engineer started actually making accordions and so I got on his waiting list and about 30 years ago or so then I managed to I managed to persuade him to make one for me so we spent a bit of time actually customizing it to the way I wanted it. There's lots of different things that you can configure to your to your liking in these accordions. So this thing has been with me many continents for 30 years now. So uh, yeah, this, this box and I have had a great time together. Uh, so I call it the Briggs because it was made by Dougie Briggs. And um, uh, I used it extensively on... Um, it's been my main go-to box. I think somebody asked me which, which of my many accordions is my go-to box. And the Briggs I always think of as the go-to box and therefore recorded with it extensively over the years and played with it with the various bands that I've played with as, as the main box, really. Uh, probably one of the biggest influences in my early life would have been Brenda Mulcair, actually, who's you know someone who's intrinsically associated with um, you know with the Irish Cultural Centre here in Hammersmith, and 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 many other places besides, because he taught so many of us from not just my generation but previously and subsequently. He taught so many musicians, you know, the um, the the ways of Irish music, and not just technically how to play the music, but also the culture around it. Session culture, getting to know other musicians, learning from them, and so I actually dedicated a couple of tracks on my album to him. One is a, is a couple of reels which I used to play with him when I was very young, and then also as well I composed an air for him on the first anniversary of his passing. Well, thank you for that. What album are you referring to? I'm referring to an album which has just come out, Shay. It's uh, it's it's an album which is in my name, but uh, naturally it was a collaboration with. Uh, 11 other musicians in fact and um, John Carty and Matt Griffin and Gino Lupari and Jerry Diver were among the probably the most important of the or the, the contributions to that album the album was released on the 1st of March it's called Will We Give It A Go and it's a it's a it's a selection of tunes of Irish music which is a, a real mix of um, some very old traditional tunes, they could be reels, they could be airs, and then it's more recent compositions by various musicians, and then there's a number of my own compositions on it as well. It was a Covid concept, you might call it, so within the confines of Covid, um, at the time when we weren't allowed to go out and play with each other in the way that we were, we were used to, I started playing quite a lot at home, which was something I was never really doing in the past. I tended to only play when I went out and played with others. And <clears throat> little sets started to form in my mind. And, you know, many of the people from, you know, many of the musicians from my generation had eventually got around to laying down some of their own music for, you know, for their own, for their own sake and, you know, for their family's sake, but also to leave a memento behind them as well. And so I thought it was my turn. It was about time I got around to doing it as well. So, you know, that, that COVID kind of was the stimulus, really. If anything positive came out of COVID for me, it was the fact that I actually applied my mind to actually preparing for recording an album. I didn't mean Matt, will you give me a hand with this see, see how it sits on this B-flat? All right. Well, I've never done this before, but this is kind of finishing the Boys of Blue Hill twice around on the Galway Shore. Well, today is Saturday the 5th of March. It's a very big day for me. It's a very big weekend. So uh, we are launching the, we have launched the album this week. We have released it to the public. Tonight is our big concert. It's our flagship concert. It is the, um, we are on here at uh, the Irish Cultural Centre in Hammersmith and I'm playing 
I'm glad to say, with John Carty, Gino Lupari and Matt Griffin. She wore a bonnet with a ribbon on it and around her shoulder hung a Galway shawl. songs tonight there's no songs on the album because uh, you know it was very much an, an accordion album with with the other with that with the other musicians that are in it but for the live performances because I've known Gino for well over 30 years that you know we played in different bands together um, so he, he was part of our core group that we we concluded we would take it out on the road and so you know Gino being a long-time friend um, it felt like the experience for the audience is probably an awful lot better if you introduce some songs into the mix as well. Well, I've, because I've known Gino so long, the first of the two songs that he sang during the um, during the sound check was "The Mountains of Morn," and I've I've heard him singing that for 30 years. He's as good as he's ever been singing that one, and it always has a fantastic impact with the audience. The second one was something I sprung on him as a bit of a surprise in the cab on the way over to the gig tonight. I said. I'm going to reconfigure a set that we did last night, and I and I want to play a, I want to play a short version of the 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 air the Galway shawl, and uh, and the reason I wanted to do that I thought it would be a great opportunity for some audience participation whereby I would just play the the air very briefly. Gino would just sing it once round, but he'd get the audience to sing the chorus with him, and then we'd carry on doing other things that we would go into afterwards. Okay, I've finally, and thank you. Uh, tonight, uh, if we, if, and we're not going to film the whole class this piece of done, but if there was a track that you think in your mind, I said, I think this one works with the audience, what track would that be? <clears throat> uh, I think one of, actually one of the, one of the sets, there's two reels that we will play, it will be the final number before, if they're kind enough to ask us to do an encore. <laughs> We will play two reels by um, that were composed in recent years. <coughs> excuse me, in, composed in recent years by two musicians. One has sadly passed away now. Um, the first one is called "Caught in the Surf," but the second one is hugely significant for you know for Irish music in London because it is, is it was composed in recent times by the Leitrim fiddler who's been in London for. For, for decades by the name of Brian Rooney, he composed it. It's the, first, uh, it's the first time I think that one of Brian's compositions may have actually been put into a recording. So uh, it's hugely significant. It's got a great swing to it. It's got a great feel to it. And I think the audience will love it. Uh, uh, may we film that one? Yes. Thank you.
questions, we know how this shit works. Australian backpackers think it means I seen you playing in Sydney and I'm here to stay with you for six months. <laughs> There's nine in me family. Not one of them is my own. I wish that each and every man would come and claim his own
Are we okay now, lads? Are we ready? Annie Martin! <laughs>